You just found the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. Okay, in today's episode, we talk about how to stay consistent. It's a very important episode because that's the most important factor to getting in shape. By the way, we got a giveaway for you. Uh, if you leave a comment in the first 24 hours and we like your comment, we pick it because it's the best one, you'll get access to Maps Strong for free. Free access to that program. By the way, in this episode, we talk about a lot of things that you can find in my new book, The Resistance Training Revolution. Go read about it. Go check it out. Go pre-order it. It's an awesome book at theresistancetrainingrevolution.com. One more thing, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications so that you know when we drop these episodes. Oh, one more thing. I lied earlier. Uh, we have some programs on sale and a workout program bundle on sale. Uh, the sale is ending very shortly. The two programs on sale are Maps Hit and Maps Split. Those are both 50% off. And then the bundle that's on sale is the Bikini Bundle. That's also 50% off. You can find all of those at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code Spring Break. All right, enjoy the podcast. You know what I get? I get teased for a lot is the uh, talking about myself thing. I, people like think it's like a narcissistic side of me, but you know what it really is? Is as a trainer, it's more. It's coming from more of like an empathetic place, right? Like I, yeah. I would tell, I would tell my story and my failures because you understand. My, it helps right. you relate more to right. your clients. But not everybody receives it that way. You know that? Mm. Like some people like look think it's like oh there goes Adam wants to talk about himself all the time. <laughs> But it's really not that way. It was like you learn to do that as a as a trainer with clients is to make yourself relatable. It's right. not like I'm talking about how awesome I am. It's right. like I did this, I did that. You, you being awesome is just that's I mean, of course. That's yeah. but that's not the I mean, point. That's just kind of how it happens. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> that just happens to be the thing. But you tell us yeah. no, that's true. Anyways. It's true. Anyways. All right, let's talk about what we're gonna talk about today. So uh for sure, um I was just talking to somebody about uh competing. And they were asking me, like, you know, what, what are all, what's the secret? You have the secret sauce to, like, you know, getting in that in incredible shape. And I said, you know what? Like, it's the, it's the answer that nobody wants to hear, that everybody's heard a million times. And even myself, like, getting into the space, like, I was really excited. I thought, like, you know, I'm going to get into the competitive world. I'm going to be hanging out with the one percenters in the, in the, you know, bodybuilding community or whatever, the people with the best physiques in the world. Mm -hmm. Like these are going to be the smartest people when it comes to nutrition and exercise science. And like, I'm going to learn a lot. Like I was so, I really was, I went into it with that attitude and I was really let down, um, that it, that wasn't the case at all. Uh, and, and not to take something from some of the very smart people that are doing that. I'm not saying like everybody was dumb, but what I realized quickly was the one thing that they all had in common um, was their ability to to be consistent, their discipline and and focus and ability to lock in on a goal and just completely shut everything else out and be very, very consistent. It's the most important factor for fitness success. There is no factor. There is no component more important no controllable component that's mm -hmm. more important than consistency. What's that saying you say all the yeah. time? Well, uh, uh, a subpar routine done consistently yeah. is always going to outperform a consistent, uh, sorry, an inconsistent, excellent program. So your workout can be incredible. You could have the best program in the world. You could follow a MAPS program. But if it's inconsistent, it's not going to perform as well as one that's not as good that's done consistently. This is 100% true for nutrition and for fitness and you know exercise. Consistency is the most important thing. And as trainers, this is what we really started to figure out. It was, how do I get my client to learn how to be consistent? And I know that most people listening and watching right now know what I'm talking about. If you can think back to when you were, I guess, in the best shape of your life, you were just really consistent as compared to when you were not in that great of shape. You were just not as consistent. That's it. So if you're going to focus on anything at all, and all the other factors are important, don't get me wrong. A good workout makes a big difference. You know, you know, the types of foods you eat are also very important. So those are all very important things. But the most important thing that you should focus on is how to become doggedly consistent day in and day out. And there is a formula that will give you success with this. And it's not what you think. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just interesting because everybody kind of knows that's like, oh, yeah, well, of course, but what else? You know, and, yeah. and, and really, you want to skip right over that. And it's so simple, but yet it's not easy to actually go through that process and be disciplined. And I, I was thinking a lot about, uh, you know, in bodybuilding and, and that being a sport. And really, like, the discipline of that sport is, you know, all the characteristics of why it, it's such a difficult sport because right. it, it's at such a an intense level level that I think a lot of people just aren't willing to go through that. I know a lot of people get like, you know, offended or, or riled up when, when people call it, remember our buddy Craig, right? Craig's competed and he's, and he's also played sports. It's a pageant, right? Yeah, yeah. it's a pageant. It's not a sport. <laughs> I mean, I disagree. I used to say that. But I no. disagree. I think that uh, what makes it a sport and so competitive is that like mm -hmm. I, I played sports and um, when I played sports, there was off days and days when I could like shut down and not even think about basketball, mm -hmm. not play basketball, eat whatever the hell I wanted to. Like when you're competing at that level, every not every, not only does every day matter, but everything you eat, you know, every time, every everything day, you drink, every yeah, yeah everything yeah. you do every day is a, is a going to be a reflection of how you look when you get on stage. Now I want to I want to mm -hmm. go I want to apply this to the average person because maybe the average person is listening right now and they're like I have no desire to yeah, to go that hard. Get on a stage or to get super shredded. And most people have no desire to do that. And that's actually not only is that totally fine, but I think that's better. I think that at that level there's although I respect it, there's also a level of unhealthiness that comes with that. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the average person. Consistency is just as important. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to be can so consistent and structure that every single minute or of every single day is planned out. No, that's not what I'm talking about. But if your goal is to have a generally fit and healthy body with good strength, good mobility, uh, you know, decent muscle, a a healthy body fat percentage, there's a range of what's considered healthy. It's relatively lean. If you want to have those things, then you still need to be consistent with your routine. That might mean three days a week of of exercise, and it may mean for the most part you eat pretty damn healthy. And that's all consistency. Now, here's the biggest mistake that people make. When people hear consistency and they think about the, the last time that they fell off the wagon, right? The last time that they were consistent and then they stopped. The thing that always comes to their mind was, is I lost motivation. Yeah. That's what it was. You know, yeah. I was so motivated before to stay consistent. And then the motivation, I lost my motivation. And then I just, I couldn't do it anymore. That's a huge mistake. Consistency, real consistency does not come from motivation. In fact, using the same example, you don't have to try to be consistent when you're motivated. That's natural. It's a very yeah. easy thing to do. When my clients were motivated, I did not have to talk to them about being consistent with their diet. It was very natural. I didn't have to talk to them about doing workouts. It was very natural. The problem is when the inevitable happens, and this happens to everybody. We're As humans, we don't stay in a state of mind all the time. You're not always happy. You're not always sad. You're not always motivated. That's impossible. In fact, motivation can't exist without the counter, which is the unmotivated uh, feelings that you get. This is just being a human. Mm -hmm. The key is not focusing on motivation, but rather developing the skill of discipline. Here's the good news about this. And I talk about this in, in the resistance training revolution quite a bit. This is actually a whole segment. The good news about discipline is unlike motivation, which is more of a, a state of mind and a feeling, discipline is a skill. And like any skill, you can develop it. Yeah. Just like the skill of shooting a basketball through a hoop or riding a bike um, or doing a backflip or doing a squat, you can over time with the right application and right structure, and this works for everybody, you can dramatically improve the type of discipline that you have. And that really is what leads to uh, consistency. I feel like you have to address why are we why are we though so drawn to the motivation? It feels mm, great. Yeah, no, it's the most. Look, I'll tell you what. It's exciting. It is. There, there's nothing in my for me. Uh, there's like extreme happiness and extreme motivation. They're pretty up there in terms of my favorite states of mind. Like when I'm extremely motivated, man, I'm on fire. Uh, I I feel creative. I can't be stopped. I got endless energy. Nothing seems like it's too, it's daunting. Everything seems uh, like I can accomplish it. I love that state of mind. I think that's why we get caught up on it because we think to ourselves, mm -hmm. gosh, if I could only be that way all the time, if I could only feel that way all the time, then uh, it, nothing would be a problem. Well, it's just, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't last that way. In fact, uh, falling in love with feelings is what gets people in a lot of trouble 
because they start to worship feelings and that can lead you to down some dark paths. Again, develop the, the skill of discipline and there is a structure and a way to do that. Um, and one of the first ways to do that is to, first off, know your honest starting point. So what I mean by that is what you don't want to do is set goals that are based on your motivated state of mind. So this would happen all the time in the gym when I would see a new client. I get a new client, usually as a trainer, when a client approaches you or is about to hire you, they are in a motivated state of mind. Most people don't hire trainers when they're really unmotivated. They don't, no, they, they don't. say the average person actually shops a personal trainer for over three months three before months, they yeah. make the commitment to actually do that. Right. So they've thought long and hard about it, and something got them fired up for that day to get in there and actually make that. That's right. So move. you're sitting in front of this, this potential client. They're, they're in this motivated state of mind. They've told themselves, all right, because personal training is not cheap, right? They're like, all right, I'm going to invest $500, $1,000 or more in hiring a professional to train me. So they're motivated. And this is what always happens. It was, and this is I, like clockwork. I'd get, have the person in front of me and we talk about their current fitness level. What are you doing for your workouts now? And it's usually nothing. Oh, I'm not doing anything. I used to work out, but right now I just fell off. I haven't exercised in a long time. I have a very sedentary life. This is very common. And then I would always ask them, how many days a week would you like to work out? And they would always give me some like five days a week. You know, I want to do this five days every a week. day. Yeah. Oh, I'm, oh, oh, I'm totally, I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. However many days you say, I'm going to be here. Now the early, you know, trainer, the, the, when I was new, I was excited when I'd hear that. Oh, perfect. We're going to train you five days a week. I'm going to have you do cardio on your off days. Here's your meal plan. Mm -hmm. This is going to be awesome. And it never succeeded. It would always result in results initially. And then the person and then eventually burnout always every single time. So I had to change my approach and little did I know at this time that I was really tapping into how to develop this skill of discipline. And what I would do is I would say this, okay, that's great that you want to do five days a week right now, but let's pick an amount of time that you think you can stick to forever. And I always use the word forever because when you say forever to somebody, then they have to take pause and be like, oh, five days a week, that might not be realistic forever. Let's start with a number like yeah. two days a week because that's two more days than you're doing now. Let's start with something small. Yeah, I got in this conversation with uh, my parents actually because you know my dad's about to go into surgery and you know wants to lose weight and uh, and also like there, there's this urgency there to to lose weight and I'm having a conversation. She's like, "Well, how are you going to get him to to do that? Like, what are you going to do?" And I'm like, "Well, we got to find something that he'll actually stick with for long term. Like, well, can't we just you know lose this weight?" And then once we get to that state, we'll, we'll maintain. I'm like, that never works out. In, my, in the history of my career, you know, people that have this urgency, this motivation, like the, the dire need to, to lose all this weight, shed down and get to this, you know, desired weight that they're going to like live with from then on. They just bypass uh, the entire process of getting down to that to that weight where you know they're they're comfortable with the amount of calories they're eating. They're comfortable with the amount of training they've been doing. Nothing is sustainable that got them there in the first place. And so now to try and live at that state is is damn near impossible. Yeah, the the whole small goals thing too. I think what's so important about that is it helps you build momentum. Totally. And, you know, I used to, I used to tell people that, uh, self, uh, motivation is bullshit. Self-belief is everything. And they'd be like, what do you mean by the self-belief? And I go, well, when you set these small, realistic, obtainable goals, you start to build these wins. The wins starts to build confidence in yourself. And that's where the real motivation and the consistency will start to come from is because you start to pile up this like, oh, this is great. I've been going four weeks now and I've been consistent with this. Okay, now I can add this and then build upon that and then add a little bit more versus, okay, I'm so hyped right now because I'm either I hate the way I look and I don't want to be this anyway anymore or I'm, I have this goal because I got a wedding so many days out. Okay, and I want to put, I want to put everything into it mm -hmm. right away. And it, the inevitable happens, just like you said. Either one, you get burnt out and you never reach the goal, or two, maybe you actually do reach the goal, but what you've built is something that's not sustainable long term. Right. So what motivation looks like is this, this up and down yo-yo uh, battle for the rest of your life. It's a roller coaster. So, sometimes you're doing great, other times you're doing bad, and where you end up is nowhere, right? You end up nowhere because it's this you know, two steps forward, two steps back, two steps forward. Actually, sometimes, oftentimes- Three steps back. Yes, the steps back and then- you, you see people over the years 
creep up in, for example, body fat because the steps back are bigger mm -hmm. than the steps forward. What discipline looks like is this, this kind of step ladder that constantly and consistently, slowly creeps up, but over time accomplishes big things. I'll tell you guys a story of a client, one of my favorite stories. Um, and this was about, I would say, I was probably 14 years into my career as a personal trainer. So at this point, I was very confident in my approach. I had now, at this point, achieved some incredible success. And uh, I had these this doctor that I trained, wonderful woman, loved her, and she referred a patient to me. So this patient comes to me, this woman, and she had zero interest in, in working out, zero interest in changing nutrition, but came to me because the doctor had, she had uh, you know, just beat cancer, and the doctor basically said, look, um, the, the odds are that this will, this will come back. You really need to take care of yourself. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I work with this trainer. He's really good. I know you don't want to work out. I know you said you hate, hate exercise, but go see him anyway and, you know, try it out. See what happens. So she sits in front of me. This is the first thing out of her mouth. She, she sits down and she goes, yeah, Dr. So-and-so sent me to you. I said, oh, cool. Okay. So, you know, what are your goals? What do you want to do? She goes, before we get into that, here's the deal. I hate working out and I'm not going to do anything on my own. Just going to let you know straight up. So she was like, out there with it. I don't like this. I'm not working out on my own. I said, no problem. What are you doing now for exercise? Like, I really don't work out. I said, okay. I said, uh, do you think you could meet with me once a week? Is that realistic for you to start with once a week and, and that's it? And she goes, well, what about on my own? What, what, what are you, you going to make me try and do on my own? I said, nothing. I don't want you to do anything else. All you're going to do is see me once a week. She goes, are you going to try and make me change my diet? So no, you said you don't want to. We're not going to work on your diet at all. All you're going to do is you're going to come see me and just work out with me once a week and then we'll take it from there. And so she's like very suspicious. She was very, you know, like, okay, let's see what happens. So she hires me and she comes and sees me once a week. And here's what ended up happening. I know you guys have very similar stories. Over time, right, she's working out with me once a week, building a little bit of strength, starting to feel better. I say nothing. I apply no pressure. I wait for this consistency to build with for her because that once a week, which for her was a big commitment at first, slowly starts to become something that she enjoys and then it becomes something she's consistent with. And it was within a six month period. She comes in the workout, we're training, and then I knew this was gonna happen at some point. I was waiting, we're, we're, we're resting in between sets. And she goes, hey Sal, um, do you have another day available during the week? Absolutely, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Scheduled her twice a week. Said nothing else. That's all we did. We stayed two days a week for consistent, consistently. Three months later, she comes to me and says, are there some exercises you think I should do on my own? She's like, I want to do like two or three exercises. That's it. Absolutely. Gave her two or three exercises. Three months later, she comes to me and says, you know what? I think I'm going to cut sugar out of my diet. Slowly over time, this woman made tremendous progress to the point where at the end of, it was like a three-year period of training this woman, she was vastly stronger far healthier, and she had become a fitness fanatic. This was a woman who loved learning about nutrition, was reading books on fitness, but no way it would have worked out if day one I told her, you got to work out five days a week with me, you got to follow this meal plan, you got to do all this stuff. No way that would have worked. So what the small goals do is it allows you to, to practice, build confidence. Once that becomes easy in a part of your life, once that whatever you decide that's realistic becomes something that is now indispensable. Yeah, oh yeah, Thursdays and Saturdays I do this exercise and then it becomes like, oh yeah, every Thursday and Saturday that's what I do. That's when you add one more level. What you want to do is challenge yourself just enough so that it has meaning. It can't be easy because otherwise it doesn't mean anything, but you can't challenge yourself so much that you're going to guarantee yourself a failure. That's how you don't develop discipline. It needs to be something challenging but realistic and over time you become disciplined. You know what I love about that story too is it highlights uh, one of the most um, challenging things that you had to overcome as a trainer, which is the excuse of I don't have time. Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, money's number one. Uh, I don't have time is number two because mm -hmm. for the longest time uh, people have been marketed to like it has to be this like- You have to be all in. Yeah, five to seven days. Otherwise if, it's not worth it. Right. If you're not tra if you're not weight training, you're doing cardio, it's got to be like this thing that you do. And, and sometimes people, that's what they hear when you hear like it's a lifestyle change. Like everyone's heard that before. Like it is a lifestyle change, but it doesn't have to be so dramatic. You don't have to take somebody- like that example right there, who hates working out, has never done anything, doesn't do anything for fitness and exercise, that person, you can't, you throw them in a three to five day a week program right out the gates, 
and you they're going to get discouraged. They're going to get burnt out. They're not going to enjoy the process. Instead, meeting them where they're at, what they're willing to commit to, and then slowly build on that. And that's how everybody, and not only that, you have to have the self-awareness. If you're if you're not hiring a coach and you're doing this yourself, you got to have the self-awareness as a person. And I, I still have to check myself. Mm-hmm. You know, I get I get all hyped up, right? We got a new goal, we got something coming up, we got a shoot going on, whatever it is. It's like, oh yeah, I got to get all in. It's like, wait a second, I know better than this. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I haven't been doing much whatsoever. If I just do one or two days a week of this. That'll already start to make good changes. If I just cut this one thing out of my diet, that'll mm-hmm. already start to make changes. And I still, to this day, do that same game with myself. And so you have to have that self-awareness of, am I high off of this motivation because I just watched some YouTube that got me all hyped up? Or is am I meeting myself realistically of where I'm currently at? That's right. And here's, okay, here's the beauty of it, right? Anything more than you're doing now is progress. Mm-hmm. Anything more. Let's say you're somebody that's just, you believe you're just so busy. You're like, I don't even have time to dedicate 60 minutes in uh, in a week. I can't even do one hour workout in a whole week. Okay, are you doing anything now? No, I'm not doing any exercise. Can you do 10 squats during the week? Yeah, I think I can manage that. I think I can commit to that. Guess what you're doing? 10 more squats than you were doing before. Right. Do them consistently. Allow that to develop some discipline in you. And what'll naturally happen, this is the best part. It's not even something that you need to like, Focus on, you will naturally reach a point where you say to yourself, I think I'm ready to do the next thing. You know what's funny about that, that and or what's ironic to me is that anything else that we're taught or that, you're, you, or that you go after to learn is is taught that way. Mm-hmm. Very but true. But for some reason- Some reason, yeah. It's it's totally promoted like the opposite. Right. Uh, With fitness, yeah. it's all this, this hype around no days off and beast mode and all this intensity driven and sweat and push and kill you, kill yourself to get to there, to get to the goals. But when you think about learning any other skill, whether it be a language or math or anything that you're trying to learn, new subject at all- Though you would never cram all of it <laughs> yeah, absolutely right out the gates. Yeah. Absolutely, you would overwhelm yourself. You wouldn't retain half the information. It's unrealistic. They're going to stay consistent with that. Mm-hmm. So we know better and everything else. But for some reason, fitness well, is still abused this way. I feel like we bring up a lot of examples a lot of time of like you know some ladies coming in and they've been getting like misinformation about you know like how much they can do. But you know I've had a lot of examples of friends of mine or you you know guys that that think they they have this thought of like working out where when they're in the gym, they have to crush like every single weight. They have to make sure that, you know, they could do what they did in high school. They have this, this memory of what, you know, a workout consisted of, but now they have their career, they have kids, they have, you know, all this stuff. And it's just like, well, I can't, I can't like balance all of that together. And meanwhile, I'm just like, I finally had this conversation with my brother-in-law just recently too, just, you know, setting yourself up like with small goals, like, so having something available, that's in close proximity, if you could set that up in your house where you go down and you literally just practice those lifts again and you do it with way less intensity and you start really building momentum off of that just naturally. That's the, that's the formula for success. You know, One of the challenges with this is that people, when they think about working out, they can't help but focus on their ideal body, right? They think to themselves like, well, you know, if I do one day a week, like, I'm not going to get there fast at all. I want the body right now. Yeah. Okay, here's what you got to do. Fall in love with the discipline and the results will follow. Fall in love with the results, you're not going to get it. I'm just going to tell you right now. If you fall in love with the goal, the goal of how you want to look, and that's all you're focused on, you're either not going to get there or you will and you'll lose it. I'm just That's just a fact, okay? 90% of you watching or listening to this right now, that's what will happen. Now, if you fall in love with the consistency, if you become a, a, a master of the consistency slowly, like I'm talking about, think about it this way. If you're consistent with your workouts and consistent with your nutrition, what are you going to look like? You're going to achieve, that's the side effect of those things. Now, here's a good visual because I think people, again, they think, oh, I'm not getting results fast enough. Okay. So I've used this visual before. I think it's a very powerful one, but If you took two lines that were parallel, and I moved one of them one degree just to another direction, one degree, you probably would not even be able to tell the difference when you're looking at the two lines. You can't tell. But follow those lines along for one mile, two miles, three miles, and the distance between them becomes massive. The further you follow them, the bigger the distance between the two. This is what happens with your body and with your progress when you apply what we're talking about. De- sure, initially you don't see these crazy results, but over time the results amplify, accelerate. Not only that, but here's the best part: the results start to become 
uh, permanent. And this is what we're all looking for. We're all looking for permanent change. That's what they mean by lifestyle change is that you can accomplish permanent change, but how you approach it means everything. Not only that, you have to understand too how, how detrimental it is for you to rapidly lose and gain. Like every time you gain all that weight back, we add fat cells to the body. So mm-hmm. you only make it more difficult. Some people are like, oh, I don't care. I'd rather just, you know, when it's summertime, I'm going to get shredded for when I'm going to be out right. in my bikini or in my shorts or whatever like that. And so, and then I'm going to enjoy winter all the time. But what you don't realize is by doing that, promoting that yo-yo dieting of up and down with weight like that, every single time you come off the wagon and you add that weight on, you add fat cells and you make it yeah. that much Plus more it difficult. it gets harder every single time. Oh, that's yeah. exactly what happens. Yeah. And you yeah. know what's funny about that, Adam, is that people think uh, discipline is monotonous. Like, I'm just going to be... No, no, no. Here's the deal. Your base is discipline. Then when you're motivated, you have fun and you push. That's right. So so what happens is when you drop, you don't drop below fit and healthy. Now when you're doing the motivation thing and that's all you're focused on, then you go like work out a lot, eat right, you know, all the time to very unhealthy, no activity. When you're disciplined, it's I'm doing great. And then when the motivation kicks in, because it still kicks in, mm-hmm. you're still going to get those, those bouts of motivation. This is when you have fun. This is when you go after PRs. This is when you go after these bigger goals or whatever, and it becomes real fun. Then when you fall down, which is normal, when you like, oh, I'm not motivated anymore, you fall back on your discipline That's and right. your consistency. That's right. Here's another part of the, the mental state that makes a big difference. It's how we talk to ourselves when we're trying to accomplish these particular goals or how we talk about the things that we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. It's very natural for us to use language like we're being forced. And and this is funny. Once I start saying this, people listening and watching will know exactly what I'm talking about. But it's funny that we treat ourselves like children uh, and that we force ourselves to do certain things that we want. So if if you're listening right now or watching, you're thinking, what are you talking about? I'll give you an example. Let's say you're on one of your motivated uh, workout and nutrition kicks. Like you're motivated as hell. You're working out, you're eating right, you're, you're whatever. And then you go to your friend's house and they're having pizza, right? So they're watching a, a game or something and some fights and everybody's having some pizza. And your friend says, hey, you want some of this pizza? Nah, nah, man, I can't. I can't have any pizza right now. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get lean or you know, I'm trying to get fit or what. I can't have it. Have you ever stopped to, to listen to yourself? What do you mean you can't? Who says you can't? Who's forcing you to not have that slice of pizza? You are. Now, you might think that that doesn't mean a lot, but it does mean a lot because over time, nobody likes to be forced to do anything. In sure. fact- That's why it, eventually you rebel. It's you in our rebel. nature. It is not. Look, if you're a parent, anybody who's, who's, who's listening to the podcast, if, you have, if you're a parent and you have a child, especially a teenage child, how do they rebel, right? They rebel and they, they don't just not do what you tell them. They go way far in the opposite direction. What happens when you're in this state of mind of, I can't have a cookie. I can't not work out. I can't miss this workout. What happens when you finally go off? You don't just have one cookie. No, you have floodgates are open. You have a whole package of Oreo cookies or a whole pizza, right? Because you're rebelling against this force that you placed upon yourself. So here's something. It sounds silly. It sounds simple, but it's extremely effective. Here's the here's the key right here. They ask you to have that slice of pizza. That's what you say. I don't want it. That somebody says to you, "Hey, you want to skip your workout tomorrow?" Say, "No, I don't want to skip that." Now, you might think that's not that big of a difference, but it's huge because it's a choice and it's a positive choice. And the truth is, it's a true choice. The person forcing you to say, I can't have that slice of pizza is actually saying, I don't want it because I have these things I want to accomplish. Change that perspective makes all the difference in the world. Now, of all the things I think we're going to address and talk about, I do think that this is one of the ones that take the takes the most practice to get good at. And the reason why I say that is because I know that a bunch of people just heard you go on that rant and they're like, well, fuck Sal, I I do want the pizza. You know, I do. And I say, I say I can't because I can't because I'm following a diet and I'd be lying to myself if I said I don't want it. And there's, and that's why this takes a little bit more practice. And how do you get from saying, okay, I don't want it or I don't want it instead of saying I can't have it. And the, the steps are like this. You have to start to learn to connect how your body feels when you eat certain types of foods, okay? I don't care who you are, okay? If you've never really paid attention to this and you start paying attention to how your body feels after you crush four or five slices of pizza right afterwards and the, the night that night of and the next day, pay attention to your stool, 
pay attention to your hair, pay attention to your skin, pay attention to your mood, your energy, how you sleep. All these things are affected by what we consume. And then compare that to when you make a different choice, say a chicken salad, you know, or some steak and, you know, and some vegetables or, you know, compare it to something that's whole foods and natural and then compare how you feel to that. And then you start to reframe how you look at it. So that's what makes saying, I don't want it easier is when you've learned to make that connection. Yeah. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's, it's also, uh, it's also understanding that you actually don't want it. And what I mean by that is, okay, when you're making a choice, especially a challenging choice that it, it, First off, every choice doesn't mean that one is 100% all, everything about it I don't like and everything about this choice I love. That would make life super easy, right? It would be a piece of cake. The truth is that some choices have aspects of them that you might actually enjoy, mm-hmm. but that doesn't override the, all the other things about the other choice that you're going to make. So for example, let's say you're you're married, you're you're dedicated to your spouse. You're just you love each other, you've been married for 25 years. This, this is very normal. You see an attractive person walking down the street. They wave at you, start talking with you. They're flirting with you. Now, th- there may be a part of you that says, hey, I want to talk to this person. I want to, I mean, I don't know, get their phone number or whatever. But do you? Pro- if you're a good person, probably not because the truth is you don't want to. You might recognize that you like the, you know, maybe the way they look, you like their attention. But the truth is you don't want to. Just like the pizza. I acknowledge that it's going to taste good, right? I acknowledge that it's going to it's going to taste really good to me. I'm going to enjoy the way, you know, I, I, as I'm eating it. But the truth is, I don't want it because that is not more important to me than the other stuff and the stuff that Adam talked about. That's all it is. That's really all it is. It's okay to to uh, it's okay to look at the other aspects. It's okay to say, you know, if I don't work out tomorrow morning. I'm going to enjoy sleeping in. I'm going to enjoy being lazy in the morning. Mm-hmm. Do I want that more, though, than the, what the workout's going to provide for me? Do I want that more than the muscle and the fat loss and the way I feel? No. So here's the truth. I don't want to miss that yeah. workout. But yeah, that, that self-talk is going to take a lot of practice and, and for a lot of people and really highlighting um, a lot of the things that you are enjoying. Like if so paying attention to those signs and signals, you know, trace it back, trace it back to new foods you introduce that are, you know, healthier in the diet. Um, that, uh, you know, you really enjoyed certain aspects of them besides the taste, besides like, you know, the obvious things that, you know, you're seeking before that. So it's really about, you know, taking, taking certain elements of what you're doing that are contributing towards the success and, and really trying to dwell and focus on the positives of it and, and highlight those. And then that way you can start having that dialogue where, you know, I know how I feel when I'm in this state and I'm doing these things correctly versus, you know, the, the other side where it's like, okay, well, I don't want that. So now I can start, you know, eliminating and saying, well, yeah, I don't want that. It's not that I can't have it. It's just, I don't want it. Well, part of getting to this place too, is understanding and knowing where your original motivation comes from or drive to change, you know, comes from many times it comes from a very insecure place, which makes it even more difficult to become self-aware and, and look at it this way. It's uh, many times people are motivated by uh, the, I don't like the way I look mm-hmm. or I've mm-hmm. been teased or I feel like I'm not attractive, you know, or I'm fat, you know, they, they have a lot of this self-talk that's happening. And if you want them to become self-aware about how these foods are making them feel, but they're still hung up on the the wrong things to motivate them into changing their behaviors, mm-hmm. it's going to be an uphill battle. You're right, because Definitely. if you hate yourself, right, if you hate the way you look, you hate uh, your, your body, you hate your belly, well, you're this person that you don't like. Well, this person doesn't deserve to have pizza. No, you can't have any pizza right now, you fat ass. You can't do that, right? <laughs> it comes from that, right? Why don't we flip that? Why don't we flip it? Rather than saying, rather than looking in the mirror and saying, I hate the way I look. I hate my belly. I hate my whatever. Why don't you look in the mirror and say, hmm, I haven't been taking care of myself uh, physically. Um, And I am somebody that deserves to be healthy. I'm somebody that deserves to feel what good health feels like. I'm somebody worth taking care of. I value my body. I love myself. And I'm going to start treating myself like I love myself. Now, I don't want that. Or I do want that. Right. Now it becomes much easier. Um, if you take care of yourself like someone who you care about or that is worth being taken care of, the decisions you make 
tend to be much better than the decisions you make when you hate yourself. In fact, when you hate yourself, workouts become a form of punishment and restricting food becomes a form of punishment. In fact, we've all done this. Mm -hmm. you, you have a weekend with your friends and you go off the rails and you eat and you drink or whatever. And then you think to yourself, that's it. Monday, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to beat the shit out of myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go on that cardio. I'm going to hammer myself. I don't care how I feel. I'm going to sweat it out. I'm going to sweat it out and beat myself up. And you wake up Monday and you feel like garbage because you had a tough weekend. But you force yourself to go to the gym and you push yourself so hard. In fact, some people push themselves so hard that they get sick and they throw up. And then they feel like, oh, I, you know what? I deserve that. In fact, they feel pleasure from this, this right. almost self-flagellation. Like I, I deserved, you know, that punishment. Now let's compare that to somebody who is treating themselves like they care about themselves. Wow. That was a, oh, man, that weekend was crazy. I, you know, I had fun with my friends, but I went a little too hard. I need to take care of myself. Monday morning comes around, they wake up. Oh, I don't feel good. Uh, I feel kind of hungover. I'm going to go to the gym and I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go easy. I think I'm going to do some mobility. I might take that yoga class, maybe do a couple strengthening exercises. Then I'm going to make sure to, to get some good sleep uh, so that I, you know, I, I feel better. They're going to make better. Just, and here's the thing. The person who took care of themselves actually did the better workout, by the way. If I was training both of them and my client comes to me and says, oh, my God, this weekend I drank and I ate and whatever. And how do you feel right now? Oh, I don't feel good. I'm not going to hammer that person through a workout. It's actually counterproductive and will give them worse results. So self-love actually gives you better results. That's the whole irony of the whole thing. Well, I, I like you give the analogy about taking care of a kid, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's more like that where you, we don't think of it that way, right? Like you wouldn't punish your kid like that. You also wouldn't let your kid smash a whole pizza either. You know what I'm saying? He's not responsible. So if you take care of yourself the same way you would take care of your child, it would look a lot different. You know, it's funny. Mm -hmm. They did a study. Uh, I, I read about this because this, I remember years ago, this really came to me. And I remember I was me I was I, because I did it myself. I was at a party and I'm one of my cousins asked me to have a beer and I said, no. And, you know, he says, come on, you can have a beer or whatever, you know, you know, whatever. I said, no, I can't. I can't. And then I remember thinking to myself, like, what do you mean I can't? Of course I can. I remember saying, why, why am I talking to myself uh, in this way? So I, I did a little bit of reading and research. And here's something that's interesting. This is actually true. When people take their pets to the vet and the vet gives them a prescription for the pet and they say, give this to, you know, give this to Buster, you know, at 8 a.m. and at noon with food. And then let's say the person goes to the doctor themselves and the doctor says, you need to take this medication, your blood pressure is high. Make sure you take this at 8 a.m. and at noon. Studies show that people are more consistent with giving their pets medicine than they are with themselves. Mm -hmm. We tend to treat other people much better than we treat ourselves. Now, this makes a lot of sense uh, from this perspective. You know yourself better than anyone else. So I know me. I know all my shit. I know all my dumb decisions. I know my, my, my bad thoughts. I know all that stuff. We tend to be very cruel with ourselves in comparison to how we treat other people. This is self-destructive, and it never, never works. Flip it. Treat yourself. You gave the analogy of the kid, right? I let my kids have a cookie here and there because I love them, but I don't let them have all the cookies because I also love them, right? Yeah. So if you come from that perspective... It's much easier to say, I don't want. And this really feeds into the discipline that leads to consistency. Without it, uh, very, very tough road. You also got to be careful of other people projecting their insecurities on you, right? A lot of times you get in rooms where people will make you feel guilty for mm -hmm. making good choices, for taking care of yourself. And because they're not taking care of themselves, mm -hmm. they're, oh, you're such a loser, Sal. You're not going to drink beer or you're lame or you're boring or, oh, my God. Like, you know, those, you're one of those. Yeah, so you got to be careful of of that, too, and be aware of, because that's what makes this challenging for some people sometimes. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm loving myself. I'm going to make these decisions. But then they feel this outside pressure from other people because other people are projecting their insecurities on them. And I heard this the other day, and I thought it was- a It's really, like a mirror is what it is. Yeah, I, I thought this was a really cool statement. This I, I can't remember who the lady was that was being interviewed, but- she was asked like, what was the best advice like her father had ever given her? And her answer was that no is a full sentence. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's really powerful. Those are the Olsen twins. Huh? That's the article with the Olsen twins. I think I read that. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Their, their sister was in that that show on that Marvel show. Yeah, on yeah, Disney. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know where. I don't remember where. <laughs> it's a, it's I read it or heard it or whatever that, but I thought it was really interesting because- I, I do remember a time in my life where I felt I had to explain myself anytime I didn't want to do something mm. uh, versus where I'm at now in my life where I've learned to get very comfortable with that. And it served me well, not mm. only in, in this arena, but in like business and other mm -hmm. things too, of when someone asks me something and I don't want to do it, I don't have to say no, because yeah, I just you say- to make up some backstory. Yeah, say, no, mm -hmm. 
No. That's it. It's a full sentence. Nah, I'm not going to do it. That's it. No, you don't, you don't you have know, to explain and yourself. And you know what's funny about that? If you say something like, like you just say no like that, or you say, no, I don't want any. They normally will not bother they you. They don't. That's if, right. If they say, have this, you know, this pizza like we're talking about, and you say, no, I can't, and you end up getting this conversation. Why? You can't. You. It's only one. Big sure, deal. Yeah, okay. but, yeah. but you just say, nah, no, I don't nah, want it. No, I don't want any. They, they leave you alone usually, unless you're at my grandma's house, in which case she doesn't leave you alone. But most of the time, <laughs> most of the time they leave you alone, and it's actually quite easy. They respect that it comes from a you know why because instinctively we know it's coming from a good place it's coming from a place of confidence the i can't we know instinctively is weak it's shaky it's tyrannical right and so the person wants to they want to almost pull you out of it if not if they right. care about you or like you said it's a mirror reflecting they think themselves. you're trapped or something and they're trying to save you no, absolutely 100 percent. So absolutely knows a full sentence that's right here's the other thing that i think is very important is when you're when you're focusing on the the things that you want to uh that you want to pay attention to in terms of your progress rather than focusing on how you look rather than focusing on your appearance Focus on your health instead. Now, here's why. And what I mean by health is how do you feel? How are your movements? Are you, do you have good mobility? Are you strong? Is your stamina improved? All those things versus looking in the mirror. Do I look better? Do I look sexier? Do I look more fit or whatever? Now, here's why health is so, so much. Besides it sounding nice and everybody, you know, health is a great thing and all that stuff and appearance is shallow and blah, 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 blah. Here's the real reason why, or I should say the reason why most people will get what I'm talking about. Because if you're listening or watching right now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to picture your body um, in perfect health, right? So picture yourself healthy mentally and healthy physically. So and what I, so real health, not just health like you know in a magazine, but in terms of like total health, spiritual health, mental health, and physical health. What does that body look like? That body looks amazing, right? The body looks incredible. If you if you focus on health, you'll get the appearance. The reverse is not true. If you focus only on appearance, oftentimes the decisions that you'll make will lead to poor health, which then leads to poor appearance. Whoa. Focusing on appearance leads to plastic surgery. It can lead to overtraining. It can lead to overdieting. It can lead to you know, drug use. It can lead to a lot of crazy things which take away from your health, but then eventually take away from your appearance. This was uh, most obvious to me when I got into competing. Um, I, again, going into it, was going into this idea that this has to be, you know, the the best of the best when it comes to nutrition, discipline, all that stuff like that, and exercise science. And then also I thought would be some of the healthiest people I would ever meet. Um, and what I found was I found more eating disorders and dysfunction mm -hmm. within that community than I previously had in the 15 years of training all these people, obese people and normal everyday people that are struggling with weight and insecurities and everything like that, I found more dysfunction in that community. And that blew my mind, but it's it highlights the point that you're making right now is that community is extremely good at focusing on aesthetics. It's extremely good at the appearance thing. They have they have mastered that. But like you said, many times that takes you down this this dark path of making choices that are unhealthy for ourselves to, to to sacrifice to make a look. Totally. Here's a two direct. Here's a two uh, outcomes of focusing uh, all your attention on your appearance. Either one, most people fall into this category. You you don't get it. You don't. You're not consistent. You eventually get sick of hating yourself. Uh, you get and you end up saying something like, you know, your friend says, "Hey, you still working out? I know you were working out like crazy before." Nah, man. I just want to enjoy my life. You know, I just, and the reason why you say something like that is because you, you were sick of hating yourself. You were sick of hating your body. You were sick of focusing how you don't look the way you want to look. You were sick of focusing on appearance. That's most people, right? Then you get the small percentage of people who are so utterly obsessed with appearance that they become orthorexic. They become obsessed with food. They become obsessed with their training. These are the people you're talking about. Yep. This is like that competitive world. This is the extreme fitness world. And although these people are very consistent with their diets and training, they're very unhealthy in other aspects of their life. They have their relationships are gone. They don't go out or do things with friends because no, no, I got it. it doesn't fit my meal plan. I can't do whatever. No, I can't miss my workout. Sorry, honey. Our wedding anniversary doesn't matter. It falls on leg day, so I got to work out. Got to do my thing or whatever. <laughs> So it, you, you, those both are the outcomes of focusing on appearance, both of which are hell, both of which are not good places to be. Now, the person who focuses on health, you know what comes from focusing on health? Balance, natural balance, because healthy means this. It means eating properly for my physical body most of the time, 
Sometimes it means I do enjoy some pizza or a glass of wine or that cookie because in those moments, I think I'm feeding other parts of my health. In those moments, I think it's about the moment. Right now, I'm with my friends. I haven't hung out with my friends in a long time. Uh, my, my aunt made homemade pizza. I know it's not going to be good for my physical body, but this is a good time we're having together. I'm having this glass of wine. We're all connecting over this food. So I think I'm going to have some pizza. It, it actually leads to natural balance, which is incredible. And it's long-term appearance. That's the, that's the side effect of all this. You're also less likely to binge on those things in those moments. So somebody who restricts really, really hard like a competitor, and we see this post-shows, you mm -hmm. restrict so hard, you're so disciplined, and then after the show, you go ape shit on everything. You eat every candy, mm -hmm. every fast food, and you go bananas, and you put 20, 30 pounds on versus the person that recognizes that relationship health matters too and that, hey, it's okay for me occasionally to have the glass of wine with my my partner for our dinner date or, okay, I can have a slice of pizza because we're all watching having movie night together. But that person can go, I'll just have a slice or two. Yeah. But the person who never has it tells themselves they can't have it and then now they can because the show is over or their, their goal they've yes. achieved, they eat the whole fucking pizza. Well, and there's a distinctive sort of aura and look about somebody who's actually exudes health uh, versus somebody who's just like completely focused on you know their aesthetic type of presentation uh, and and really like uh, you know just focusing on other metrics that are important for you uh, you know this is this is something that's going to carry with you even further that you know you can, you're just going to build on that from then on out yeah it's it's actually uh, real health is is vibrant and it's attractive in person. Fake health might be attractive in pictures. It might be attractive in Instagram, but you know it when you see it in person. You meet the person and either insecure or they don't have, they don't, you know, I know he's ripped, but he doesn't look healthy to me. Or I know she's lean, but, you know, she doesn't look healthy. Real health is extremely attractive. You know, back to where you were talking about with the food, Adam, about the, the, the person who binges on the pizza versus the person that has a couple slices. Here's some more characteristics of what that looks like. The person who's healthy who focuses on health, when they're having the pizza, if you watch the meat or if you've experienced this yourself, you're enjoying the pizza. I'm eating the slice. I'm biting into it. I'm enjoying the food. Wow, this tastes really good. Woo, this sauce is incredible. I love this pizza. They're in the moment enjoying the pizza. The person who's binging doesn't even focus on the slice that's in their they're mouth. They're focused on the next one. They're focused on the mm -hmm. next one. Yeah. It's not about the pizza I'm eating. It's about the one that I want to grab and put on my face right afterwards. You might have experienced this yourself. You're not even focusing on the taste. It's about getting the next one. In fact, when people eat with awareness, they eat far slower than when people eat binge. When people binge, the speed at which they eat is so fast, in fact, that they eat past the point of being full to where they feel sick to their stomach. Somebody who's healthy, who's actually enjoying the food, enjoying the, the taste of the food, is eating it in a way where it feels okay. They don't go past full and they actually have a better experience. So focusing on health will get you the appearance that you want. And here's the other thing. I know some people are listening saying, well, what if I want to get ripped? I do want to get shredded. Well, that's okay because here's the deal. Focusing on health and being consistent and disciplined will keep you at this level. And then you get those motivated spurts, go ahead and get shredded. But guess where you're going to fall back to? Healthy. You're yeah. going to fall right back down to healthy and relatively lean. The other way is like, I'm going to get shredded and then where do you fall back to? Gain 30 pounds, look way different, yeah. Feel way different, way different. In fact, these competitors you're talking about, you know, I, I've known female competitors who gained 30 pounds in a month post show. Oh, it's very common. Tiny girls, very, 110 very pound girls yeah. gaining 30 pounds in a month. Like you can't tell me that that's uh, that's coming from a good place. That, no. that that's coming from self love. No, it absolutely isn't. Look, uh, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides. We've got lots of great guides there that you can choose from to learn about everything from building muscle to burning body fat. Also. If you like this episode, uh, everything that we're talking about, you can find in the book uh, that I wrote called The Resistance Training Revolution. In fact, you can pre-order it right now at theresistancetrainingrevolution.com. Working out was only for fighting for me my whole life. I've only thought about trying to fight with people. That's why I want to work out. And then I realized, no, that's it's for your mental health. That's oh. what this thing is. It's all about your mental health. You're in there, you're working your physical, and that's the whole thing. That's and why that's, you never want to yeah. stop. Yeah, and because I look at this today, I'm like, it's easy for me to go, 